What's up guys, this is Ryan Maker from RC Maker. Today I wanted to run through some new options with you um, in regards to our brand new AFEP, Adjustable Floating Electronics Plates. These are selling like crazy, we've almost sold out already. However, um, I wanna give you guys a video just so you can see all of the different um, all of the different options that we have. There's a lot of different options and I know this can probably be overwhelming for some people, um, not knowing what to buy and everything. But I'm gonna explain it to you and keep it nice and simple. So basically we've got two different materials. The reason we have two different materials is for weight. So different cars require different, um, different amounts of weight on them to meet the required limits. And worldwide we also have a lot of different limits. So um, we've done all these different ones so that everybody can reach their desired limit um, in their country or with their car. So for you guys, um, depending on what battery weight you're running and everything as well, um, you're going to be desiring either the the single-sided floating plate or the double-sided floating plate. Um, and then so you've also got the different materials and you've also got single and double-sided. So there's some different options as well. So if your car is really light and you only want to float the ESC side, then maybe you want um, the brass. Whereas if your car is really heavy and you don't want any extra weight really at all um, and you want to float your ESC side, you can look at using the carbon one. Um, if you want to float both sides and your car is really light, then you want to use the brass double-sided. And if you want to float, float both sides but your car is really heavy and you don't want to add too much weight, then you want to go with the carbon. It's basically um, that simple. We also have two different center weights here. So we have this center weight here. And this one here. So this one complete with our insert is around five grams. This one is an additional 10 grams. So we're looking at about 15 grams. So you can use that as an even further tuning option to any of these plates um, to achieve your desired overall weight. Um, and this is obviously central weight. So this isn't going to make any difference to your balance at all. So above that, um, we also have two different options for our uh, center inserts here, type A and type B. Um, so basically, they are just got different holes for different cars. So if you have a look in the description, um, you'll be able to see what car um, does what plate. So the, basically, all of this is universal. These two plates, um, it depends what car you're going to be running, and you only use two of those holes. So while there is a lot of holes in there, only two of them will be for your car. Um, and both together, these plates can do 10, do 10 different models of cars. So that's why they do have um, so many holes in them. Guys, to keep things simple, um, we've actually only released the actual kit itself um, in brass, and then you can buy the carbon options. Uh, this is basically just to keep things uh, more simple and for all of our distributors as well, not having to carry all these different types. So um, you can either buy the kit in the brass uh, single-sided or the brass double-sided. So to give you a look at what you get in the kit, it's basically all of these things added up. You can see here. And I will just run through exactly how um, this all goes together and how everything um, locks in to create your floating plate. So let's use a carbon one for an example. So it's exactly the same as the brass one. It's just made of carbon. Um, so you can choose what center weight you want. The kit one is here and you have an option for the heavier one. So let's just show the kit one for now. So basically you grab the insert that comes with yours. Look at the instruction manual to see which way it goes in um, and you can just either flip it around or flip it that way um, depending on which way. We're then going to slot it in here so you can see now that there's your adjustability, your left and right adjustability and that's sitting nicely in there. And basically that's honestly it because then all you've got is your shim underneath which um, shims it off the deck like this. So that's a 0.5 mil shim. So basically, once you've got all that, you can just sit it flat on your chassis and screw it in. And it's that simple. And once you've done that, you're going to have um, your left to right adjustability as well. So I'm going to show you guys now exactly how we mount it to the car. So here's my Automatics A800X. I've mounted it using those two screws in there. Um, I've also installed my battery and everything. So just to give you guys a rundown, rundown on how um, this works with the floating battery as well. So this side is the floating battery. Um, you're going to need to adjust the height of your battery clamps uh, to accommodate the higher battery because of this. Um, that's not a big issue. Just make sure that you get it with a little bit of um, a little bit of extra height. Uh, you don't want the battery pinned down too hard. So if you can see my car when I put it in, we still have a little bit of up and down movement here, um, and that's absolutely required to ensure that uh, the car can flex underneath the battery mounts. If you're using tape, then make sure you don't tape your battery in too, too tight. Um, we don't want to be pulling, whilst this is very stiff, we don't want to be placing a lot of extra stress on there because you're also going to be limiting your flex as well. So the whole um, idea of these plates is to make sure that you're not um, impeding on the flex of the chassis. 
So for the automatics here, I've actually had to add a little bit of rubber. Um, I've just used our rubber battery pad and cut it up into strips um, just to space it out a little bit from the belt so that it's not hitting. For the automatics, I've also created a little bit of a, um, a battery stopper here using the using the screw that goes into the motor mount, the further forward screw, and you can obviously adjust that. And that that's really nice because it stops the battery um, from hitting your pinion because that can often be um, quite close a lot of the time when using the standard center weight. For most cars, you guys are gonna have like two screws coming out of here, you can adjust it yourself. So you don't need to do anything, any of this. It's only if your car depends on the center weight as a battery stopper, then I just recommend using some nice thin foam or something, pack this up um, until you're, you're happy with how this, um, so with how it comes out. Now I wanna show you guys exactly um, how it adjusts left to right whilst it's floating. So just tip the car upside down. We have our two screws here, just loosen them slightly. All right, so that's now gonna make the whole con whole thing loose and now you can actually slide in and out like that. So you can see there, the whole ESC um, and everything is sliding in and out there. So basically you can then, once all your electronics are in, you can actually still get the balance perfect even um, though they're double-sided taped into the car already. To take the battery out and show you what's actually happening on that side is your battery doesn't move obviously because it's fixed in place by here, but you are getting the, um, the movement of the plate underneath, which is also going to exaggerate the, the balance adjustment. Um, so it's a really, really nice tool for adjusting your balance without having to move weights around your car. You can just simply slide it left and right um, based on exactly what you need. And there should, almost, there should always be enough movement in there um, to get your exact desired balance. You shouldn't have to be adding too much weight around the car at all. So guys, once you've achieved your desired balance, um, just tighten your ESC or your plate up wherever you want it to be. Um, it's where your car's balanced. Just make sure that you get the plate square when you tighten it up. The automatics is a bit difficult as it has an angled chassis. Um, however, I can get it close for now. So just line it up, eyeball it with the side of your chassis, should be fine. Don't over tighten these two screws, they don't need to be tightened like crazy. Um, it's not going to move, it's clamped fairly tightly in there, so you don't need to go crazy on the tightening of the screws, um, as that could, you know, start bending things and stuff, so you don't want to be doing that. So just, just nice and snugly up, um, and you won't have any issues. So guys, now's the fun part. I really want to show you the flex um, and how this actually affects the flex. So that's one of the major thing. The major reasons we do this is to um, isolate all of the flex from under the under the battery and under the electronics. And that's something that you know um, hasn't been done particularly. We've seen a lot of manufacturers create symmetrical chassis and everything to make sure the flex is the same left and right. However, when you've got 280 grams of electronics sitting on each side, it does really have a massive effect. And you can feel that um, basically just when you're flexing your car, you can feel it left and right that it's different. So I'll show you guys now. Um, hopefully you can see in the video just how much of an effect this has. So you can see there the chassis is flexing under the brass weight. You can see the battery staying nice and still and all that flex is happening um, on its own without the battery interfering at all. So you can see the gap changing under the brass there. Now I'll show you the electronic side, which is possibly a little bit easier to, uh, to see. So you can see the, the electronics are staying perfectly still and you're getting all of that flex is occurring under. Um, and normally that's being impeded by you know, the double-sided tape, um, your speed control, your receiver, your transponder, everything. So you can clearly see there that everything's staying nice and still and you're getting totally symmetrical flex left to right. So guys, I hope this has been really helpful in informing you just how the AFEP adjustable the floating electronics plate system works. Um, we're really excited to have this as we really believe that it's something that um, is going to move the industry for sure. This is something that has been overlooked for a long time and we think that it's a bit of a game changer. Um, so really looking forward to seeing it on everybody's cars. If anyone has any questions at all, please feel free to just uh, post anything on Facebook or you can email me, ryan at rcmaker.com.au. I'll be sure to get back to you. Um, I'm really interested in hearing everybody's thoughts and We've got a lot of guys using it already, which is really exciting with a lot of positive feedback um, a lot across all different cars. We've got guys using it on the BD9, the Automatics already, even the Mugen and the ARC, which is um, really good. They've been testing it on track and are really happy with it. So it's really nice to see it all coming together. And I hope that you guys um, grab one as well and definitely try it out for yourself and just see the benefits for yourself. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll chat to you next time. Cheers.